Hey everyone, Julian here. Welcome back to episode three of the Windows subsystem for Linux series. In this episode, we're going to be styling the terminal. Um, we're going to be using an application called Hyper. Some of you may have heard of it. It's a terminal emulator built with Electron and it lets us do some of the things that we can't in the defaults, like having tabs um, using some hotkeys. So let's go ahead and get started. So back in our Windows 10 virtual machine and this is the default terminal that comes with the Windows subsystem for Linux and you know it's fine it gets the job done but it's not incredible it's you know I think we can do better so you can just see the default colors are pretty good as well they used to be kind of horrific but they have fixed that so if we just go into bin and list out the content so you can see you know it's definitely very very workable um, and I would normally leave it as it is but I want tabs I want to use some hotkeys so we're going to use hyper so let's um, let's just shut that down and we're going to need a few things so first up we're um, the font that I'm using actually let me show you an example so this is the terminal that I use um, and as you can see, it might be a bit small, so sorry guys, but if we go back into the same directory and list out, you can see it's a quite a nice color palette and we can launch a new tab with um, Control Shift T will give us a new tab and Control Shift N will give us a new window as well. So it's just nice, it's convenient and um, it makes workflow a little bit better. So the font I'm using is actually this one here, Roboto Mono, but if you can't find it for some reason, just search up here for Roboto and okay, yeah, I've got monospace selected. So you can see you just want to come ahead and grab this Roboto Mono font, go to customize and while you're here you may as well just grab a few extra versions as well. And you want to hit this little download icon. And we're going to open that once it's downloaded. We're going to hit extract, extract all. And then I'm just going to select all of these, right click and install. Now I've already got them installed on this machine, but just go ahead and click yes. Cool, right. So the next thing we're going to need is Hyper. So again, it's a terminal emulator built with Electron. Um, I like it. I mean, it's not perfect, but you know, it gets the job done. Um, so you just want to go ahead and click on the downloads tab and download the Windows executable. And we're going to run that once it's downloaded. So let that do its thing. Okay, and you should get this little prompt here. Um, if you don't, then just head over to your downloads, click on it and it will fire up. So here we go. Here is the default hyper terminal. And as you can see, we are currently in Windows. So it's not the uh, bash terminal, which is what we want. But that's easy to fix. Just head up to this little hamburger menu here and go down to edit and preferences. So. First things first, let's get it so it's running bash. So you want to scroll down and I hope you guys can see this. Um, look for the sh look for the section titled shell and you'll actually see above it, it says bash on windows and it gives you the path. So we need to provide it a path for it to run when it first launches. So just go ahead and copy the bash on windows line and stick that here in shell. So I'm gonna paste that in and click save. Uh, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go, that should be a bit better. I think you guys should be able to read it. So what I've just done is scroll down to this section here titled shell and as you can see, the hyper config gives us a nice little snippet here. So you just want to go ahead and copy that and paste that in here. 
Now let's just make sure that's working. So I'm going to close Hyper and um, relaunch it to see if it will launch with Bash. Beautiful. There we go. So I don't know how well you guys can see that. Um, let's go ahead and increase the font size while we're in this Hyper config. I'm going to change it to 18 just so you guys can see it. I think that should be okay. Let's go a little bit bigger. Let's go up to 20. Okay. Well, I hope you guys can see that, but we are in Bash now. We're in the Linux subsystem. Um, we're in the root directory, and there we go. So if we um, CD back into bin again and list that out, there we go. So, cool. And to open up a new tab, Control Shift T, and we get a new tab, which is exactly what we want. And it looks like Hyper's frozen. I think this is, this may be because I'm on a virtual machine, but <sighs> right, I'm going to leave that in because I want you guys to see what's happening here. Let's launch Hyper again. Oh, blimey, I'm all over the place. Okay, right. I think it's because we're on a virtual machine. I use Hyper on my main machine every day and it works absolutely seamlessly. So I'm going to put it down to that. Just follow along and it will be absolutely fine. Um, okay, next up. So the other things that I changed to kind of get the look that I've got, uh, you want to change the line height to 1.1. Uh, so just save it as you go. Letter spacing, I've got as one. I've also got the background set, um, background color, yep. Yeah. So we're going to change that to 2E3440, and we're going to save that. So we get this nice kind of muted grayish blue, which I, I really like, and it works with the rest of the theme that we're going to work with. Um, border color. 4 C five double six A. Go ahead and click save. And that gives us this nice little white border. But more importantly, when we do launch a new tab, you get this nice tab separation up here, which I quite like. Just makes it clear that we've got multiple tabs running. And the hyper really, this virtual machine, I don't know what's going on, guys, but it really doesn't normally do this. I mean, if we come back to my... Windows machine and uh, you know we can tab for days absolutely no problems okay. see what I mean the hyper is a little bit buggy like you know I'm hovering now it's giving me the close icon but okay that seems absolutely fine Right, let's go back into the virtual machine. I'm putting it down to the fact that we're in a virtual machine. It doesn't want to work that smoothly for some reason. But anyway, let's power on through. Okay, so that's everything we're going to change in this .hyper file. So again, just go ahead and save that. Um, by default, I've got my font size set at 13, I believe. But I think that's going to be a little bit small. Oh, actually, no. You know what we did forget to do is the font. So just go ahead and put Roboto Mono followed by a comma and go ahead and hit save. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to increase the font size just so you guys can see what's going on. Obviously, it looks a lot more spaced out because we've increased the font size, but I'd recommend you go with something like 12 to 14. We'll give you a nice, comfortable uh, font size there. Um, okay, right, next up, we're going to change the directory and file colors. 
Uh, so head on over to your home directory and just for reference you can see we just got the normal stuff in there. What we're going to do is with nano create a file called dot d i r c o l o r s dir colors and we're just going to open that up. You can close this uh, hyper config and in a browser head on over to this URL. If you guys can't see it, I will go ahead and chuck it in the description below. Um, but it's a repo called Nord Dir Colors by um, Arctic Ice Studio. And I really like it. It's part of the Nord Colors kind of range of, of colors and themes, which I think are really nice. Sorry, I need some coffee. Um, so what we're going to do is literally just copy all of this content of this file. We're going to copy that and in Nano I'm just going to right click and that's going to paste in Control X, Y and Enter. So this is our Dir Colors file. So what we need to do is tell Bash to execute this every time we spawn a new shell. So what we need to do is just add a line to our bash rc file. So with nano again, dot bash rc. Now just tab down to the bottom of the file and we're gonna enter the following eval quotations, dollar sign, brackets, dark colors. And we're gonna point that to the dark colors file that we just created. Dark colors, dark colors. Control X, Y, and enter. Now we need to just reload the bash RC config. So source, can't type. Source bash, shosh. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Okay, right, so we've reloaded the bash RC. Head back to the root. I'm gonna clear that. And let's do an LS. And I don't think that's updated. What's going on here? Let me go into bin. Oh yeah, it has throat. Okay, cool. So we've now got these, these kind of nice shades of blue and underlined, which I think looks really nice. Um, your opinion may vary. So the last thing we're going to do is just quickly fix our PS1 prompt because it just looks a bit naff. So let's go ahead and go back into our bash RC. So nano bash RC. I can't talk and type, I'm starting to realize. So down at the bottom here, we're just going to go and enter the following export ps1 equals now you can get elaborate with your prompt i just like to keep mine really simple i do backslash u which is going to give us our username at wsl colon and then i do backslash w let me just check my notes here yep backslash w which is going to give us the complete path to the directory that we're currently in. Backslash N is gonna give us a new line. And then I like a dollar sign and a space. So I'm gonna go ahead and control X, Y and enter. Source dot bash RC to reload that file. And there we go. So I hope you guys can see that, but it's literally just J at WSL a colon and then the path, the full path to the current directory that we're working in. So CD, let's just go into MNT slash C. And again, you can see these new colors that we've set in the DIR colors are taking effect now and it looks pretty nice. So that's about it for this one. Um, obviously you can get elaborate with your um, prompt, but like I said, just keep it simple, um, keep it out of the way and just focus on the work, not really how the prompt looks. If you do wanna add some more things, you can head on over and just search for bash PS1 escapes. 
and the first couple of results should give you all of these escape sequences which you can use in your prompt. So for example, uh, let's go and just play around with some. So you know, you might want to have the time, for example. So let's go and do something like this. Uh, let's stick the time in this little set of square brackets. Um, and that will be the current time in 24 hours. So backslash T. So let's just exit. Yes. So there we go. You know, if you want some kind of timestamps in your uh, prompt, feel free. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. Uh, one website that I do quite like is, I think it's Easy Prompt. Uh, where are we? Here we go. So you can, if you want, you know, you can go ahead and set something like a username at host space and then you can put all kinds of things in you know 24 hour time you can put your git status in there you know if you're in a repo it will let you know um you can do all sorts so feel free have a play around with that if you like but um you can put color in as well but i'm not going to get into that now i might do another video on the prompt but really you just want to set it trust me keep it simple keep it out of the way and um just focus on the task in hand so Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. And let me know in the comments below if you've got any recommendations or how you guys set things up. Um, I might play around with some different terminal, terminal emulators. Um, Hyper isn't always the most stable thing. Generally, it's absolutely fine. Um, I think ConEMU is one that I want to play with. And I think there's a few others, but do let me know in the comments below if you've got any recommendations and I will see you guys on the next one.